so I'm, I'm going for a little walk. I, um, had a tough night last night. <clears throat> and I'm feeling pretty awful. So I, uh, I figure I'll, I'll just, um, go for a walk and see if that helps. See what happens. I think I'm going to go down to Fifth Avenue. And I'll head down to Washington Square. That is the Empire State Building. And Trying to turn this camera around. I may have to end this recording and and then um, and then turn it around and continue. I think that's what I'll have to do. Okay, so we're heading down Fifth Avenue. The sun is right in my eyes, but. Um, when I first moved to New York City in August of 1981, my first apartment was in a belly dancer's loft on 15th Street, and we're going to pass by um, where I used to live. Well, not the building, because it's just in a little, but um, from Fifth Avenue. But this whole area was just pretty desolate. There wasn't a lot going on. There weren't very many restaurants. There was one restaurant. Um, it was like a health food place. I think it was called Brownies. I can't remember. But you know, to get a newspaper, you had to walk a ways to get a coffee, all of that stuff all the stuff that we take for granted now. Now this whole area has become pretty, pretty uh, vibrant and active. Lots of scaffolding. It's always like that. No problem, okay, have a good day. Beautiful buildings. There's really some gorgeous architecture here on Fifth Avenue. And when we pass where I lived, I'll show you that there used to be a nightclub called the Peppermint Lounge. And I went and saw an Iggy Pop concert there and uh, took my shoes off to dance. And they were a pair of vintage shoes that I think, I don't know, were my mother's from the 30s or I guess 40s. And um, they were really cool. And someone stole them. And it was um, snowing out and I was barefoot. I had to get in a cab. <laughs> oh, the stories of my younger days in New York City. Pretty sure there was a lot of alcohol had been consumed that night for me to make such a foolish decision to leave my fabulous shoes on top of a speaker at an Iggy Pop concert, no less. Okay, so this build, this thing right here, which is like, I don't know what it is, empty. Oh, it used to be Eddie Bauer. Gone. This was Peppermint Lounge. And I used to live right down that block. And I slept in a, in a little alcove of this woman who was a belly dancer, 
she was, I believe, Armenian. And she taught belly dancing. And I, she rented out a little corner of her space to me. And that's where I slept and lived for, well, at least I think a year. All right, now we're heading towards 14th Street. This big thing is the new school, which is part of Parsons. Um, so I took all my undergraduate classes that weren't design oriented over at the new school. On this next corner up here, just not the scaffolding, it's ridiculous. Um, where it says Merci Market, I don't know if you can tell, right? That building, that used to be another nightclub. I used to go there all the time. Um, I can't remember what its name was. Oh my gosh. Uh, all kinds of people there. A lot of blues. Anyway, they tore it all down and now they've got this huge big new structure. This is Parsons. See? My old stomping grounds. into the village <clears throat> when the towers were hit um, the twin towers they blocked off all traffic and pedestrians at 14th Street you couldn't go below 14th Street unless you had you lived here or there was some specific reason and my husband's office was down in Soho and uh, so and I was working there at his advertising agency my son was you no know, I want to say let's see how old was he Fifteen, sixteen months old when the towers got hit. September, let's see, April, May, June, July, August, September. So 12, 17 months old. And I remember taking him in a stroller and um, telling the guy the police guy or whoever it was that, um, you know, my husband's office was down here and he let me through and I was walking down the middle of Fifth Avenue, right in the middle of the street because there was no car traffic. It was just all people. And there was this huge guy wearing like a tank top, super muscular beard just crying, sobbing. I've never forgotten that. Just sobbing. As he walked down the street. This is the West Village. Isn't it pretty? There's some just beautiful brownstones and lots of trees. Okay, so we're 
heading down to Washington Square Park. A little outdoor dining for 24 sets. So we're getting into NYU territory. NYU owns a lot of buildings for their um, students, teaching staff. And this building, 1 Fifth Avenue, is kind of a famous building. It had I don't know if it still does, but it used to have this really hip bar that everyone would go to. This is 8th Avenue. It used to be, um, when I was a student, the place to get cheap shoes. <laughs> it was just, every store was shoes and, you know, pretty cheap, but from all over the world. If you wanted a pair of cheap shoes, that's where you went, 8th Avenue, 8th Street. Here's one of these little little streets that just kind of shows up out of nowhere. A lot of this, a lot of this is NYU housing. Hoping that we can see there's this guy who takes his, I think it's about a thousand pounds, a piano, grim piano, and he hauls it about a half mile into Washington Square Park and plays. come here all the time with my little kids when they were little play in that park over there there's a couple of them See if we can hear any musicians students hanging out. The piano guy, his name is Colin, he usually sets up over here.
a warm day. It's in the 70s. There's a little performance stage up here. Often people are doing stuff. But this is usually where the piano guy comes, right here. He sets up his grand piano. we can find in Washington Square. So my kids used to get in here, strip down, and run around inside of this fountain. In the summertime. Along with, you know, 60 other kids.
There's a guy that sometimes hangs out here. He's just covered in pigeons. He feeds them. This guy's a die-hard tanning fan with this little foil there for the optimum rays. These guys are setting up something. Oh, here's here, this. Oh, no, it's not the same person, but it's a woman. Look at all the pigeons. You see her? She's feeding them. Washington Square Park, full of activity. Let's see if there are any chess players. So they used to have, back in the day, tables set up with chess boards and these guys would bring their own chess pieces and everyone would play usually speed chess. They'd have a timer. No. Yep, people are doing it. Sometimes they play for money. Oh yeah, here. So these guys are playing. Or maybe not. Maybe they're just waiting. These guys are All right, how are you? Uh, Ariane. Hi, John. Okay. a whole society, a community right here. Amazing, right? Just waiting for players. And then sometimes there's more over on the other side. Friendly crowd. Okay, so we've seen some a trio playing some music with a beautiful singer. She was fabulous. 
We've seen pigeons, the pigeon man. We've seen the chess players. Kids rocking on a skateboard. tables. Not sure what these guys are playing. Cards of some kind. That's what I was looking at. These are these beautiful brownstones. And then there's this tree, which is somewhat Famous. Let's see if I can get. I was just. They just have a label saying it's an English elm. But if I am not mistaken, this tree was where they had, I believe, lynching. Which is horrific. They used to have, I thought, a little plaque talking about it, but maybe that's been taken down now. It's so horrific what we humans are capable of. We're walking out of the park. This is all NYU housing. And NYU is just south. It covers this whole block down below. See all those purple and white banners or NYU banners. Sometimes you just have to point your camera up. The hotel, Washington Square Hotel. I had a friend who used to stay at that hotel. about to go under more scaffolding. The trees are turning. The yellow, the green, and the pink flowers. Here we are. We are on Waverly Place and Sixth Avenue. It's a pretty cool looking building right there. It's kind of like the flat iron where it makes that funny V look. Trees are changing color. And here Heading up down. So up ahead, do you see the clock tower there? 
That's a public library, but I think, I want to say that it used to be a women's correctional facility. I may have that wrong, but that's what I thought it was. I'm going to see if there's a plaque saying they have a really pretty garden. I know it probably doesn't feel that way, but this is not a lot of traffic. This is bizarrely uh, sparse. And I'll show you this garden, which you, I've walked in. Um, I can't remember how I even got into it. Pretty, isn't it? Let's see if I can find a plaque for this building. of details on it that are kind of striking. Alright, so Jefferson Market Branch. Third all right, it was the third judicial district courthouse. So I was wrong. See if we can see what it is. And now it's the New York Public Library. Formerly the Jefferson Market Courthouse. in 1876 served as the women's court women's court until 1932 I knew women had something to do with this I just got it wrong look at this funny little street this tiny little buildings that only go up a couple floors and then I'm just gonna walk across the street here so you can see this is one of those funny little streets patch in place it's literally like an alley you see imagine if that was where you lived In Square Park, we're heading heading north. Oh, that's too bad. This place was a um, kids' clothing place that went out of business. Last view of 
downtown. 